This is the new 2024 BMW GS 1300, and today we're going to give it our first impressions. So who and what is this bike for? This GS 1300 is supposed to replace the GS 1200, and I think next year they're also going to come out with the Adventure model. And this is obviously targeted at the same class of riders for the 1200, 1250s. And we all know the biggest adventures those riders take is to the coffee shop and back. So this looks like it can get there. We'll see on the demo. Right into the looks, it looks like a pretty nice bike. It looks a little bit longer than most bikes. Huge passenger seat. Nice little rack here on the back. Handguard stock. Dash the same as most BMW dashes. A GPS mount. Cruise control. Tons of options. Heated grips. Ride modes. Boxer engine. Huge fat foot pegs. A nice piece of rubber on them. The passenger ones look actually a little bit bigger. We have dual discs in the front and single disc in the rear. This is a chain drive bike. All right, so I'm six foot four for reference and I'm comfortably flat footing the bike on both sides. Slight bend in the knee. It's a very upright seating position. I don't feel cramped at all. The tank feels very long and the dash seems pretty far away from me, but the handlebars seem to be in the perfect position, perfect width, perfect distance from my body. The mirrors do look a little short. They could be a little bit wider on both sides. The windscreen has these nice little extra windscreens on the sides to help deflect the wind away from you. The boxer engine, even when I put my leg way out in front, it doesn't seem like it's going to be a problem. It is kind of ugly. The dash on the GS1300 is actually different than most of the other BMWs I've ridden. So the RPM gauge does look a little bit different. The miles per hour is right in the middle instead of in the top left. And this looks very clean. It has your ride mode, has your time, your gear, temperature, total miles. I'm sure you can change it to trip miles. This thing has so many features. We're not going to talk about features. We're going to talk about how it feels when you ride it and how it feels when you're not riding it. Unfortunately, since this is a demo, I don't have all the time in the world to check out all the different features or ride modes. So we will be riding this bike in dynamic and we won't be using cruise control or anything like that. I was told this does have blind spot detection. So there are these little LEDs built into the mirrors that will come on just like the newer cars nowadays when someone is in your blind spot. Let's see if that works during the demo. The seat is very comfortable. The suspension seems very uh, forgiving. Maybe a little bit too much. Might want a little bit uh, more stiffness. But I'm excited. This bike feels really good, really comfortable. Let's give it a ride. All right, we're on the 2024 GS1300. And first thing, vibration during idle. Slightly. This is uh, more rumbly than I was picturing. Sounds good, actually. I like it. The dash for the 2024 does seem to be different than the 2023s. The RPMs go up and around instead of just up. I like that the miles per hour is moved directly in the middle. We are going to change the mode to dynamic. This is like sport mode as far as I can tell. And let's see if this can get us to a coffee shop and back. Right away, tons of power in dynamic mode. Very comfortable. The ride position is literally perfect, straight up and down. Six foot four for reference, not cramped at all. The engine does have a little bit of grit to it. It's not silky, silky smooth. It's not. It's not too rumbly. It 
just has a little bit of feeling, which is good. I like that. Tons of power. You can see here we do have this blind spot assist, which is nice. More nimble than I was expecting. That feels really good, actually. So vibration after we get up to speed. No vibration at all. None in the mirrors, none in the handlebars, none in the foot pegs, none in the seat. Very smooth, very stable. I feel rock solid on this bike. Not going anywhere. It is pretty windy out today. And this little windshield does a little bit, but about right at the bottom of my visor is where the wind is hitting me in the face when my helmet's closed. I can see why people buy these bikes and use them as a mixture of a touring and adventure bike because this is super comfortable. I could see myself riding on this for a long time. And then you have the capability to go off-road. So the clutch, I've only shifted a couple times. Feels great. These bars, I mean these levers, uh, feel the same on a lot of their models and I really like them. Doesn't release too early or late. Feels just right. The shifting up and down on the foot lever feels very smooth. This does have the quick shift pro assist, whatever it's called. And I've tried it on a couple other bikes. Downshifting feels really good. The upshifting, you have to be in the right RPM range for it to feel okay. The throttle on this is very smooth. Easily maintaining a comfortable speed. But if I wanted the power, all I have to do is twist the throttle and it's immediately right there. The gauge here in action, like I said, it is a little bit different than the, maybe the 2023 models or just the other BMW models. And I like this. I'm not sure what the curve, if it's supposed to represent anything, like keep it above the curve maybe, I don't know. But I like that the miles per hour is front and center, the gears right to the left or right to the right side. And they kept it extremely simple. Oh yeah, it's natural for your legs to want to hug the tank on this bike. 50 mile an hour, nimble, very nimble. Let's see what the brakes are like here. Oh, first of all, downshifting. I'm not braking at all. Downshifting, amazing. I love when bikes downshift, uh, not downshift, um, engine braking. Engine braking feels amazing so far. I didn't use the brakes at all except to slow down just a little bit in second gear because it wasn't necessary. The engine braking did all it for me. Start to stop just like that was very clean. Didn't even think about um, stalling out. When we take this corner right here, we are only going to use the quick shift ability. So I'm not going to touch the clutch at all. I'm just going to hold on to the handlebar and only shift with the quick shift pro assist, whatever it's called. So I just shifted up twice using the quick shift assist pro, whatever it's called. And it's very jumpy when you upshift. You have to be right at the right RPM range. So we're only going to use that for the rest of the ride to see if I can't find that range. The downshifting is fine. The upshifting is a little bit trickier. The mirrors, I did mention my initial thoughts that I thought they could be a little bit wider, but now that I'm on the bike, they're actually perfect. They're far enough out and they're big enough. Engine braking, no brakes here, no brakes at all. I should have downshifted earlier. There's still no brakes. Okay, we're braking. Yeah, brakes, definitely not too touchy. Um, I'm not having to squeeze really hard either. It's just about perfect. Okay. Okay, I see now. So I just did the quick shifting again, no clutch. I got up to 6,000 RPM, and it was much smoother. It was still jumpy, still jumping around, but it was much smoother. Okay, here we're not gonna use the clutch to downshift. You can see we're low on the RPMs. 
just tap the lever and it goes down. All the way off the gas. Tap and it goes down. So downshifting is much easier with this shifting assist. Upshifting seems like you need to be between six and seven. So we're gonna try that again right here. Off the clutch completely. In a second. Little jumpy still. Five thousand RPMs. I'm gonna try it right here around 5,300. Really jumpy at 5,300. Lurch is really hard. Quick shift, downshift. Doesn't let you. It finally let me on the third try. Downshift. That's happened twice now. It took multiple tries. Maybe my RPMs are just too high. I'm not sure why. The back brake is a little bit lower than I'm used to. Not a huge deal. Quick shift. 7,000. Super jumpy. First to second. Super jumpy. Almost threw me off the bike. So all this talk about this quick shift assist pro being the best thing ever. Yeah, it's not really that good. I'm trying to find the right range. It's okay. It's decent on downshifts. 6,000 was good. This bike leans very easily. 6,000 RPMs. Didn't hit it. See, 6,000 seems to be the best so far. 7,000 was super jumpy. 5,000 is jumpy, not as bad as seven. Overall, this bike feels very good. I don't know the price on this, but I, it's BMW. It's obviously gonna be expensive. This bike feels like a very capable bike, which I expect it to feel that way. This hasn't exceeded my expectations because I expect a lot. If you're gonna charge a lot, you better deliver a lot. And so far, this has delivered and there's a lot of things like the options over here, the cruise control, the settings, other ride modes, rain and road. Those are boring, we're not gonna try those. We're not gonna try all this stuff in this video. Okay, we're going for 5,600 RPMs. Oh my goodness, that was it. Okay, if you're getting this bike, 55, 5,600 RPMs, up shifting. That was the spot I've been waiting to find. So if you guys see this light here, this is a motorcycle in my bottom right, or my bottom left. And this blind spot detection is still picking it up. Not just a full-size car, but a K1600 motorcycle. So a larger motorcycle. But that is kind of impressive. I didn't think it would work that well. Just finished the test ride of the brand new 2024 GS1300 from BMW. And it was a great ride. The power was great. I kept it in dynamic or dynamic or dynamic pro most of the ride. The braking was smooth. I didn't really have to brake much at all really during the ride because the engine braking took care of most of it, which I love. The spike's engine braking is great. Shifting, great. If one of your main reasons for wanting this bike is the quick shift assist pro whatever they call it um forget about it that should not be any reason why getting the bike it should be other reasons and then just have that as a little nice add-on because the downshifting is pretty good and convenient but the upshifting if you get it right which i only did a couple times it's it's good ish if you get it wrong, which I did most of the time, it feels like a brand new rider is shifting for you. And it doesn't feel good at all. Shifting with the clutch is a hundred times smoother, way better. So don't make that one of the top reasons why you're gonna get this bike. All the dash and controls and options, there's way too many for me to review in this short demo period. So just talking about the ride experience, ton of power, very comfortable, clutch and brakes were Perfect riding position was great. Six foot four, not cramped, no problem at all. 
Uh, I don't know what the price is. Probably around twenty to twenty-five thousand. It's a lot of money for a motorcycle, but if this sounds like the bike you want, and you want all this additional, all these additional options, this might be the bike for you. I would not buy this bike. It's too expensive. I don't need um, a big thirteen hundred adventure bike, and probably you don't either. But um, if you want to buy it, go ahead. It's not my money. If you want to see me test ride the smaller F900 GSA, click this video right here. And if you want to see me test ride a bunch of other videos, a bunch of different brands, click this playlist right here. Rapping when they all want me to sing I still they call on an album so I gave them 20 singles Yeah, I'm trying to get a hit, that's why I swing